This is Story Recapped. Today, I'm going to explain an action, horror, sci-fi film called Planet Terror. Spoilers ahead. Watch out and take care. At a club in Texas, a go-go dancer named Cherry Darling performs enthusiastically for the customers. But when the music ends, tears flow down her cheeks as she lies on the stage, weary from being objectified every night. Inside the dressing room, Cherry's boss, Skip, scolds her for crying on stage. Cherry tells him that she's quitting because she needs a dramatic change in her life. Skip doesn't believe her, but she takes her earnings for the night and leaves the club early. On the way home, Cherry stumbles to the side of the road when several military trucks almost run her over. When she gets up, she limps in pain due to a splinter on her thigh. The military convoy arrives at an army base several miles away from the town. Abby, a biochemical engineer, exits a truck and berates a man named Rami for allowing three specimens to escape. As punishment, Abby's men subdue Rami and cut off his balls. After the deed, Abby shoots him dead. Lieutenant Muldoon emerges from a truck and asks Abby for the chemicals that he wants. Abby points out that all the material is at the base, but Muldoon says the deal is off and he now wants all of it. Muldoon's troops start shooting at Abby's men. As the troops hold Abby down, Muldoon asks him for the chemicals again as boils start appearing on his face. Abby tells him that it's all around them before shooting a canister that sprays green gas into the air. As Muldoon and his men walk into the green mist, Abby gets into a truck to escape. However, a man gets on top of the vehicle and tries to grab him. Not far from the base, Tammy stops by a barbecue restaurant called The Bone Shack to cool down her overheating car. The owner, JT, gives Tammy a gallon of water and invites her to try his barbecue, but she refuses. Later that night, Dr. William Block and his wife, Dr. Dakota Block, wake up at 8 p.m. to prepare for their shift at the hospital. When Dakota looks outside the window, she sees green mist rising in the air. As Dakota prepares breakfast for William, she tells someone on the phone that her friend will be picking up her son, Tony, in two hours. She uses another phone to warn her lover that her husband probably knows about their affair. Inside the Bone Shack's bathroom, Cherry washes her feet and removes the splinter from her thigh. Ray, the local mechanic, arrives and asks JT for a cup of coffee and cigarettes. JT gives him the coffee for free to celebrate the restaurant's 25th anniversary. He threw an anniversary party, but sadly, Ray is only the second person to come in that night. JT points to his only other customer, Cherry, who's sitting alone on a table. Ray greets Cherry and calls her Palomita, but she tells him she doesn't go by that name anymore. Ray notices Cherry wearing the jacket he lost when she left. When Ray asks Cherry what she's doing with her life, she reveals that she wants to become a comedian because people tell her that she's hysterical, defending that she's already booked shows in town. As Ray is about to leave, Cherry asks him for a ride. When William arrives at the hospital, a patient named Joe asks him to look at a bite on his arm. Joe claims that he was bitten a half an hour ago, but his skin shows advanced stages of rot, implying that it's been there for much longer. William tells him that he has to lose the arm to keep the infection from spreading. Dakota soon arrives to inject him with anesthesia. First, Dakota injects him with the yellow syringe to keep Joe from feeling pain. When Dakota injects him with the blue syringe, she tells him that he'll barely feel it because the first drug has already taken effect. She then injects him with the red syringe and notes that he'll never see her again. Not long after, Joe drools and drops unconscious on the bed. About two miles from the military base, Tammy's vehicle breaks down, so she tries to hitch a ride. While flagging down a vehicle, two infected people suddenly attack her and pull out her entrails. Cherry sees the attackers carrying her body away as they pass by, but Ray thinks they're picking up roadkill. After getting startled by something on the road, Ray swerves off, causing the truck to roll. When the truck stops, they find themselves upside down. As Cherry berates Ray, someone pulls her out of the truck and takes her to the woods. Ray grabs his rifle and shoots the attackers, but he isn't able to kill them. When he reaches Cherry, he's appalled upon finding her leg severed. At the hospital, Ray tells William that three sickos attacked Cherry and took her leg with them. Sheriff Haig arrives and arrests Ray for unlawful firearm possession and takes him to the station. Soon, more sick people arrive at the hospital. When a paramedic arrives with the dead body, William tells someone to call his wife. When Cherry wakes up, she's devastated to find out that her right leg is gone. 
At the station, Hag receives a call from his brother, JT, who complains about two delinquents standing outside the restaurant. Before hanging up, Hag asks JT for his barbecue recipe and threatens to raise the rent, but JT says he won't give it to him even under duress. The so-called delinquents soon show up at the door. JT doesn't realize that they're infected, so he invites them in. When Dakota meets William, she's horrified when her husband shows Tammy's corpse to her. A paramedic shows him that Tammy's brain has been taken out of her skull. Dakota runs off to another room to grieve, while William takes Tammy's phone and follows his wife. William asks Dakota if she knew that Tammy was in town, but she claims that she didn't. Dakota tells him that they've stopped seeing each other, but he doesn't believe her. William asks her to show him her phone, but she refuses, so he injects Dakota with a yellow syringe, which causes her to go numb. William takes the phone from her and finds out that she's been sending messages to Tammy. William attempts to inject her with the red syringe, but a paramedic calls him, so he locks his wife in the room. The paramedic notifies him that the bodies have disappeared and shows him the blood trail. At the station, Deputy Tolo asks other officers to help him with the crazed suspect who bit off his finger. When Haig heads outside, they find out that the suspect has escaped. Deputy Carlos finds Tolo's ring and tries to give it back to him, but a sicko bites Carlos's arm off. More sickos turn up outside the station, so Hag and Tolo shoot them. Other police officers soon arrive to help them deal with the sickos. Ray drop kicks an infected man and kills him by shooting him while breaking off the chain on his foot with the same bullet. Ray tells Hag that he'll go to the hospital to get Cherry, so the sheriff and the other officers go with him. As more patients pour into the hospital, William decides to leave due to fear of getting infected. On the way to fetch Dakota, he finds an infected Joe mutilating a doctor. Joe cuts his glasses with the surgical saw, but it shuts down when he inadvertently pulls the cord from the socket. Instead, Joe infects William by popping a boil from his face and smearing the blood all over him. Meanwhile, a Texas Ranger named Earl McGraw feeds his sick wife when Hag calls him on the radio to ask for his help. When he turns back to his wife, she is turned into a sicko and attacks him. In the hospital, Dakota escapes by jumping out of the window. When she reaches her car, she puts her limp hand through the door handle and uses her feet to unlock it, but she slips and breaks her left wrist. As she drives off, Ray and the other officers arrive and witness the chaos at the hospital. Hag wouldn't give Ray a gun, so Ray pulls out two knives from the glove box and runs to the hospital. Ray slashes and cuts the sickos who try to attack him while carefully avoiding physical contact to avoid infection. When he reaches Cherry, she's cowering under the sheet. She's uneager to leave because she's missing a leg, so Ray breaks a leg from the table and thrusts it into Cherry's stump. On their way out of the hospital, Ray protects Cherry from the sickos until they make it to his truck. When Dakota gets home, the babysitter twins berate her for being late. Dakota kicks the two girls out of the house and takes Tony to the car. As they prepare to leave, the twins suddenly smash her windows and windshield with shovels, so she speeds off. Soon, the police and a few civilians arrive at the bone shack. Hag decides to deputize some civilians, but he still refuses to give Ray a gun. When they get inside, Hag finds his brother lying on the floor. Hag thinks that his brother is dead, but JT soon gets up and tells him that he must have passed out after killing the sickos. Dakota stops by a house and asks Tony to take a gun out of the glove box. She tells the boy to shoot if anyone other than her comes out of the door, even his father. As he walks towards the house, Tony accidentally shoots himself in the head. She goes back to the car, but William, who has turned, grabs her and tries to inject her with an unknown substance. Dakota pulls away and takes Tony out of the car as more sickos show up. When Dakota knocks on the front door, her father, Earl, opens it while aiming his axe. Earl is not too happy to see Dakota, but he pulls Dakota inside when he sees the sickos chasing them. At the shack, Ray reminds Cherry that she's wearing his jacket and asks her to check the pocket. There, she finds the engagement ring with an inscription that states, two against the world. Cherry confesses that she left because she no longer believed in their relationship. Ray shows her that she's wrong by making love to her. Later on, dozens of sickos head toward the shack as it burns down. Tolo has accidentally shot Hag in the neck, so he and Ray carry the sheriff behind the counter. Earl and the other civilians also arrive at the restaurant to get away from the sickos. Hag apologizes to Ray for giving him a hard time and says he wouldn't have done it if he knew that he was El Ray. The sheriff finally gives him a gun and tell him to do what he does best. Tolo is reluctant to give Ray a gun, but he is instantly impressed upon seeing Ray spinning the pistols in his hand. 
three sickos suddenly break into the restaurant and kill Tolo. Ray shoots three sickos and tells the others to run outside. However, Ray discovers that the sickos are swarming their vehicles, so he tells them to get back inside. He asks Skip to retrieve the truck, but he refuses, so Cherry takes the keys from Ray and goes outside. Ray shoots the sickos on Cherry's path as she makes her way to the truck. When she finally gets inside the vehicle, a sickle hangs onto the door and tries to grab her, so Ray shoots him. Cherry rams the truck into the restaurant so the others can get inside. Cherry gets on a motorcycle while Skip and the babysitter twins ride with JT in a convertible. Earl stays behind to slow the infected down. Ray wants to drive alone in Dakota's car, but her tires are blown, so he uses Tony's pocket bike instead. The convoy shoots and runs over the sickos that block their path, but soon they come across a horde on the bridge. Not long after, Muldoon and his men shoot the sickos and forcibly take Ray and the other survivors to the old army base. Inside, Abby recognizes Ray and tells him that Muldoon is stealing a chemical called DC-2, which turned the people into sickos. Muldoon needs the chemicals to control the symptoms. He further notes that a small percentage of people are unaffected by the gas and that they are the key to finding the cure. Abby asks Ray to help him get back to his lab so he can finish creating an antidote. Two of Muldoon's men soon arrive and take Dakota and Cherry away. Ray tries to run after them, but another soldier beats him up. When JT starts babbling about his barbecue recipe, Ray realizes that he's trying to distract the guard. Ray warns him against doing anything, but JT attacks the guard anyway. They manage to knock down one of the guards, but another one shoots JT in the gut. Ray kills the guard and goes with Abby to find Muldoon. When they locate him, Muldoon removes his gas mask and reveals why he wanted to take the DC-2. He and his men killed Bin Laden in Afghanistan by accident. Instead of getting a reward, the government gassed them with DC-2. He figured that the best way to find a cure was to release the gas into the general population. Muldoon soon starts mutating, so Ray and Abby shoot him dead. The soldiers that took Cherry get bored, so they force her to dance on her wooden leg. Cherry starts dancing, but she suddenly knocks out one of the men with her wooden leg. While he's down on the ground, Cherry stomps on his eye. The furious soldier recovers and takes off his pants to force himself on Cherry, but with his mask off, his reproductive organ melts. The other soldier tries attacking them, but Dakota regains control of her hands and shoots the soldiers with her syringes. Soon, Ray and Abby arrive to rescue them. Abby immediately shoots the soldier who isn't deformed. Ray takes out the wood from Cherry's stump and attaches a custom-made rifle and grenade launcher in its place. Cherry immediately shoots a grenade to order her attacker to open the door to the command center. She then uses the rifle to kill the startled soldiers in the room. Ray arms the other survivors and tells them to make their way to the helicopters to escape. JT and Hag say they can't go with them, so Ray gives JT a remote detonator and asks him to give them three minutes before pushing the button. Cherry rides with Ray on the motorcycle to shoot down the soldiers that are coming after them. The group learns that the helicopter is heavily guarded, so Abby goes ahead to sneak his way through the guards, but he gets shot. As JT waits for time to pass, he shares his barbecue recipe with Hag. JT finally detonates the explosive when his brother dies. Cherry launches herself into the air by shooting a grenade on the ground. Upon landing, she spins around while shooting soldiers surrounding her. A firefight ensues, and the survivors make their way to the helicopter. A soldier shoots a grenade toward Cherry, but she manages to dodge it. Another soldier emerges to shoot her, but Ray fires at him. However, the soldier manages to hit Ray several times before dying. As the group boards one of the helicopters, Dakota runs to the other chopper to look for Cherry. William enters the helicopter and tries to attack Dakota, but Earl guns him down. Skip manages to fly the chopper, but more soldiers arrive, so he mows them down with the rotor blades. Ray tells Cherry to leave him and find a safe place in the ocean. Cherry refuses to leave, but Ray soon succumbs to his wounds. As the helicopter flies up, Dakota throws Cherry a rope and tells her to reach up before grabbing the rope. Cherry kisses Ray on the lips. The group soon ends up in Mexico, but its cities are devastated by the outbreak. By then, Cherry has embarked on a mission to find more survivors and lead them to a safe place by the sea. When a sicko emerges to attack a child, Cherry shoots him with a chain machine gun on her leg. As she rides back to their new home, she carries her baby on her back. She wishes that Ray could see her and his baby. Cherry recalls the inscription on her engagement ring that there are just two of them against the world. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications. And leave a like it really helps the channel out. Thank you for watching.